Okay, so on today's little video, which I'm referring to as a quick sniff for information. I know most people don't wanna spend a lot of time on YouTube watching a video, so we are starting our new segment called Quick Sniffs. So today's Quick Sniff is about how to clean some of the training materials or containers that you have. So I have with me Dr. Mallory Deshant. <laughs> so she is a stickler about making sure your stuff is clean. Mallory, thank you for coming here to do thank this. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we've had these conversations before. A lot of people ask, how do we clean our materials? So I'll let you start off with some of the easy things. Let's talk about some of the PVC, whether it be pipes or boxes or anything like that. How do we go about cleaning these things? And I'll make some space so you can talk about that. So we got this, and here's our Noah product that you have. Let's talk about that first. So what's this? Yeah, so these are just alcohol wipes. There's no fragrance to them. They're not going to leave anything behind, and it's really nice when you're on the go. A quick clean of the inside of your container, and then it'll just air dry pretty quickly. That'll evaporate. So do I need like paper towels at all to like wipe this down or anything like that? Nope, so you can literally just take out the wipe, wipe the inside down all around, and then in a few seconds, it'll evaporate. Okay. So then you don't need to do any drying off. So I don't have to worry about like residual alcohol odor or anything like that? Nope. Okay, so what about sunlight? People like to put some things out in sunlight. Does sunlight help? I mean, I know people can't have a nice fancy UV or ultrasonic kind of thing, so what can they do? Does sunlight help if you... How does that? Yeah, the sunlight can help heat it. You just want to make sure if you're putting it outside, it's not real windy and you're getting all those dust particles and basically mm. getting it dirty again after you just cleaned it. Okay, and what about wood? So this has a wood base, but let's say I had a box made out of wood. What's the problem I have with this? And is there anything I can do for cleaning of wood? So wood is a lot more difficult um, because it's going to absorb the odor that you have on it. So it is fairly difficult to clean. Okay. Um, you might just want to get new wood or go okay. to a different material. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so so wiping these things down, if it's plastic, it's pretty easy to do. Anything this type of plastic material is a very easy thing to wipe down with just your typical alcohol wipes that you see here. And any brand, just make sure there's no fragrance or odor. Okay, or yep, we don't want like lavender left Correct. behind. Correct, yeah. right, right. Okay, <laughs> so I'll move these out of the way. Now let's get into what do we do, let's say I'm cleaning some of these, um, uh, Jars. So how do I clean a jar or a metal uh, can, like shaker can? Um, here's another one. I'll let you kind of talk about these things here first. Yeah, so the glass and the metal you can just boil. That'll kill anything that's in it and it'll clean it nice for you. And that's pretty easy. Anybody can do that. Okay. Anything particular about boiling? Should it be just random water? Uh, how long do I boil it for? What would you say? Yeah, so you definitely want to do um, distilled water if you're able to do that, uh, especially if you have hard water where you're mm -hmm. living. You don't want any residue of you know minerals or whatever is in that okay. water. Okay, so distilled water, and I read somewhere 12, 13 minutes sound about right for boiling yeah. of these type of things. Yep. Okay, how often should we boil our materials like these that are like our outer casing? Um, so ideally as often as you can, if okay. you're storing it in a jar, which I know you want to talk about in a second, but if you're storing it in there, you don't have to do it as frequently, but if you're using it with several different dogs, you for sure want to make sure it's clean before you're okay. reusing it. Okay. Now I have two different types of lids here and there's actually a third type of lid, which we don't have, which is your typical mason jar lid, which is going to be like a two piece lid. Like there's that inner piece that comes in and out. Uh, this is a plastic lid here. This is a metal lid with a lining. I'll let you talk about this real quick. Yeah, so um, when you're talking about cleaning, so you can boil this because it's like the tin. Yep. The plastic one, I mean, it's a little bit cheaper, so I would just recommend if you're going to use that, just get a new one. And you can do mm -hmm. the same thing with this one over time, you know, it'll start to, to wear. Yeah, right around it. here, that, uh -huh. that, that yeah, lining that right lining. there. Yep, okay. so you can just replace it, no problem, and you should be able to reuse your glass ones for a long time. Okay, and then, so we talked about I know you had like a little pro tip, so I'm gonna move these out of the way real quick. Actually, before I go to that, th what's this typically for and what's the difference between this, this kind of type glass jar? Yeah, so these are the jars that we have. We use them for our olfactometers. Mm -hmm. And this septa right here, this gray okay. piece, mm -hmm. um, that's Teflon lining septa. Okay. So it really is concealing all of the odorant that you have inside the jar. This one just has an opening here because we pierce it with tubing to utilize in the mm -hmm. olfactometer. Okay. But they do have lids that are, you know, it's a normal lid that's completely covered. Yep. 
Um, but there are individual lids you can buy that have that Teflon lining, so you have yeah, to Yeah, I was just saying, SEPTA, right? That, yes. That's like a, a lining that kind of goes inside yeah. this piece right here. When you screw it down, it gives yep. it a real It'll good... It'll really seal that odorant in the jar. Okay. And then we kind of recommend once you have that odorant in your jar, mm -hmm. you have a good lid on it so that odorant isn't coming out, that you can then store it in a glass jar bigger so, like this one. And yeah, then I can put this inside that. here. Yep. Like and then so. if you're doing that and you have multiple odorants um, or training aids, you know, in your pack or whatnot, make sure that you have them separated in the container. So say I have, you know, four of these amber jars. I don't want to put them all in this one if all four of those are different odorants. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And what is amber? Since we talked about that, what's amber do versus a clear? Uh, so the amber is just going to keep out light a little bit better than this clear one. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends on the product that you're using. So um, UV light can destroy materials faster than... Yes. Yep. Okay. So that's a good tip there. So here's another little thing you want to talk about, your little pro tip about storage. You kind of just did, this is yep, a metal tin. Yep. It's just a different vessel that you have inside of there. So instead of that glass jar, you just have a, a tin with your odorant inside. Okay. And the tin would be boiled the same as the other ones too? Yep. Easily to clean, just like the glass and that other okay. metal one. And of course, like we show here, you label what you have for training. So that way you yes. kind of know what's in your glass jar so you don't yes. make mistakes of yeah. cross-contaminating that stuff. Correct. Uh, last question. What about dishwasher? Should I use a dishwasher? What's a pro and a con to using a dishwasher to clean my stuff? So the pro would be, you know, you can sanitize, you can get mm -hmm. that heat cycle, but the con is going to be if you're using it for other food products or really any other products as well. So your typical dishwasher at your house, you don't want to use because right. of all the built up soap. Correct. And food. You can get one that's just like on the a standing table or a counter or whatnot and just use it for your, your training aids. Um, just make sure, you know, if you're getting some kind of detergent or soap or whatever, that it's not going to be fragrant, which a lot of the ones that are out there for the Definitely dishwasher are. are. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody enjoys that quick sniff and that bit of information about how to deal with cleaning some of your training materials that hold your odor and to make your training even better for your dog. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, please like and subscribe by clicking down below. And if you've got any questions, we'll have our emails down below as well. So we hope to hear from you. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one.